I love that first song, Create a Clean Heart Within Me and Renew a Right Spirit Within Me. What a blessing that is, amen? That comes from Psalms 51, where David, after his fall, in the horrible things that he did at that time, as we do continually, he was called out on his presumptuous sins by Nathan, the prophet. And this is part of what he prayed in forgiveness, thy great faithfulness, his tender mercies. He was praying. And he ended up, in verse 12, saying, creating me a clean heart. For, you know, I pray that for all of us because sometimes we have a hard week. Sometimes we have a tough week with the filth that goes on or something trying to carry us back. You know, I read something that was pretty interesting. It says if your spirit isn't fighting with your flesh, then you must not be filled with the Holy Ghost. If everything is just going smooth for you and you just think everything is going great, I tell you, I wore with my flesh daily. Daily, I wore. He just never gives up. The old man always trying to get out. That's why I pray, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Boy, do I need it. Amen. I need his mercy and his long suffering and his greatness that he gave his only begotten son, which we all need. I just remember the great John as he wrote in John 10, verse nine, that Jesus said he was the door. Not that he was, he is the door. And anybody enters in by that door shall have eternal life. Also, we can go in and out and have pasture. That pasture where we can eat where his water washes us and cleans us, where we're by the still water, where he prepares a dinner for us in the presence of our enemies. What a blessing that is to know that we have a father that cares for us so much, that loves us so much, that we can come to him any time with any need, with any problem. You know, I love the word It says he's not only my rock, but he's my defense. He's my salvation. It says I shall not be greatly moved. I want you to think about that today. I won't be greatly moved. That's in Psalm 62, verse 2. He says he is my only rock and my salvation. He is my defense, and I shall not greatly be moved. No matter what's going on around us, what we see, what we watch, what we hear, we shall not be greatly moved. He's the one that says, I will guide your steps in your way. I love it. It says that if, you know, he says that, let his word, let his word be what guides our steps. Let his word keeps us from the enemy. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen. If we focus more on Jesus in the world, then we'll have our eyes on him. We come in here not to say, what am I going to hear? But God, what can I do for you? Or God, what are you going to do for me? See, I'm coming in here. Lord, what do you have for me today? What do I need to hear to make me better in your way? Boy, do I need it. I think we all need it if we'd be honest with ourselves. That closeness, that closeness that we need to Jesus that we forget about during the week when we're in our own little world that we're in. You know, we, we find ourselves with some of the tribulations or some of the stuff we go through when we're walking through the path of this life. If we can only really realize that we're not, this is not our home. We can really realize that we're just sojourning and we're just passing through. And we truly believe we're just passing through. I think our thoughts, our ways, and our life would be a lot different than what it is. We get caught up in ourselves so much. And what's going around us, we start complaining. We start, 
getting mad at people because of all the different stuff that we want to think that is our way. But if we understand it's only his way, and if we look more at Jesus, what his way was, we can learn a lot more the way our way should be. Amen? You know, I, I, I found myself hiking back with a lot of pain yesterday as we took Josiah on a two-mile hike. And then I caught myself complaining a little bit and sitting down and like, man, this is bad. How am I going to make it back to the car? In my mind, I was thinking that. And then people would come by and talk. And, you know, and then it's just like, you know, suck it up. Snowflake, let's go. And I was thinking about the walk of life. You know, when I was climbing that sand hill, it was like, I'm going to make it to the top. Now, it was easier for the younger one, but I got to the top. And I got to the car. I made it. And the whole thing was, it was a picture to me, our walk with Christ. It's not always going to be simple. We're going to have aches. We're going to have pains. We're going to have struggles. We're going to have eels. But boy, when that downhill came, it was kind of nice. When the flat ground hit, it was even better. But that's the walk we have with Christ. Sometimes it's going to be a struggle and we're going to be in pain. But the whole point is, how are you going to finish? Now I could have just sit down on that sound you know, and just pouted and cried and waited for hours and maybe someone would pick me up on a motorcycle and take me back. Or I was just going to have to pick it up and just do it. You know, even with all those things in my ear, telling me things I ought to do and what I should be getting done. I'm like, you know what? Lord, strengthen me. And I, and I believe that was a picture for me to show me that we just need to trust in him more. We get so focused on our little problems, no matter if even people pray with us, we still focus on small problems. Not believing that God can handle those problems, amen? God can handle everything and anything he wants to handle. He is God. He's a sovereign God, and I don't want us to forget that. You know, never look around to see what's around us. Just look what God's doing in our lives. You know, there's people missing today, and we don't know where they're at. But I just pray that God touches them where they're at. People are missing church more, not just here. Everywhere I talk to pastors are just saying the numbers are going down and down. And it's just because they're getting so comfortable within their walk. You know, in these days, from what I see going around me, we need to be closer to God, and we need to be more in his house, and we need to be worshiping him, and we need to be praying to him, and we need to have this fellowship so we can edify each other. I need building up. Does anybody else need building up in here? Amen. We all need building up. So that's why I'm going to talk about walking the way of safety or peace today. That's why I've talked about Jesus is our rock. He's our salvation. But the biggest thing, we shall not be greatly moved. No matter what hits us, what comes against us, we shouldn't be greatly moved. Our faith goes out as soon as it do. You of little faith. I get a picture of that boat. When Jesus fell asleep in the front. And all the stuff started to come against these mighty fishermen. that seen the worst of the seas that you could see. And they were scared. So it must have been pretty bad. First thing Jesus said, ye of little faith. Ye of little faith. Where is our faith? Is it in the circumstances that's around us? Is it in our job? Is it in the hospitals? Is it in the phones? Is it in the people next to you? Or is it in God? I think the problem is we lack that faith. Father, I pray faith for our faith and belief for unbelief, that you give us more faith in these last days that we can walk according to thy word. Amen? Concerning this greatly move is concerning ourselves, our confidence in God is supreme. He is the only rock. Steadfast, I shall not be greatly moved. Pacific, truly, or is silent my soul. That's that peace in the storm. Let my soul be so silent. Let me have peace when I see things around me doesn't come up against 
what it should be coming up against. The things that we get afraid of, Lord, give me that silent within that. I don't want to be the person that's screaming and crying. I want to be the person that has that peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen? I don't want to be moved or shaken in my faith at all. Lord, help me have that kind of faith where I'm standing up on that solid rock right here. Because if I really truly believe, truly believe that God is my defense, and what can break through it? Do you remember the story of Elijah and the guy that was following him? Where he was worried about the great army down there. And Elijah was just as calm as can be and had peace. He was silent within his soul. And the guy was getting so nervous and just complaining, look at, look at what we're going to do. And Elijah said, Father, just open his eyes. And he opened his eyes and he just saw all the fiery ch chariots and all the stuff that was out there greater than them. And he says, you don't understand what's around you. Just believe and have that kind of faith. Just have that kind of faith. I want us to turn to Proverbs. As I say, we trust in God as our rock and our strength, our salvation, our defense, and our refuge. We trust in him, amen? In Proverbs chapter 3, if you're there, say amen. I'll give you a moment more. Proverbs is right after Psalms. Okay. Proverbs 3 and chapter 23. Verse 23 says this, Then shalt thou walk in thy way, what? Safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. I love that. And thy foot shall not stumble. Verse 24, When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. That's a promise to us. Let's hold on to that. Shall be sweet. Verse 25, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Verse 26, for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from what? From being taken. Do we believe the word of God is true from Genesis to Revelation? Do we truly believe that God can keep our footsteps? Do we truly believe God can enlarge our footsteps so we slip not? Do we truly believe this, that he keeps us in a way of safety? From what I hear of some Christians when I'm around them talking, they're mostly complaining and crying about the problems of life and saying God is my God and all things are possible through him. God is in control. God has it in his hand. Where is our faith? Then thou shalt walk in thy way safely. The first of the promises of protection, safely, safely. God is the guide and the guardian of the faithful. Your walk shall be free from anxiety and care, I mean care, and secure in the Lord's protection. How many of us would like less anxiety today? Amen. We turn on that one eye, Hezekiah, and the anxiety goes out the roof. I'm just saying. The peace of God. It says the peace of God. Sorry. The peace of God. I love that. That the peace of God is within thee. Within our walk. In Philippians 4, 7, if you want to turn over to Philippians, you can, or I'm just going to read it. It says in Philippians 4, 7, I'm going to start on verse 6, but remember in verse 4, in Philippians 4, it says rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. We are to be happy, we're to be rejoicing. And look at verse 6. It says be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and thanksgiving, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, 
Let your request be made known unto God. And let's look at verse 7. And what? And the peace of God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. What a promise that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Get that, all understanding. We don't know. We have no way of thinking, oh, it's not going to work out. Oh, it's so much trouble. We can't make it. We can't make it. And God's saying, listen, I give you peace. And it surpasses all of your understanding because I give it to you. And that's a key thing you got to realize there. It's from God. The peace of God, no one else can give peace. No one else can ensure peace. No one else can possess peace. No one. It only, it only comes, comes from, from God. God. And if, if you're, you're in God, God, you have peace. If you're not in God, it's a fake peace. Because peace says it's from God. God. I love, I love that. that. The, the mighty effects. effects. It, it shall keep our hearts and our minds. minds. I, I think, think we would like our minds, minds kept more today than anything else. else. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I really do think that. Yeah. Keep, keep our minds and keep our hearts. Here is a power more mighty than the universe, if you believe in that. More mightier than what God has created, what he said, I have created the heaven and the earth. More mightier than that. Silence is sometimes more powerful than speech. Think about that. Silence is more powerful than speech. Love is more mightier than rage. Love is more mightier than rage. So peace is more powerful than the storm. Remember the first words Jesus said after he said it says, he stood up and he said what? Peace be still. In the storm. He says that with our life when our faith is in him. He'll look at the storm, he'll look at the circumstances and he'll just say, peace be still. And everything then from that point on is being lined back up for us. What a blessing it is to serve a mighty God. What a mighty. It keeps, a, it keeps the heart from fear. I think we need to pray less fear in our lives and more of peace. There can be no fear of man, no fear of the world, no fear of death, no fear of hell in the heart where, where dwells the peace of God. If the peace of God dwells in you truly, you don't have the fear of anything else because you have peace. Because God has given it to you. I want you to think about that. And then verse 8 finally says this. If you want to think upon something, you want to act upon something, this is what you think upon. Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good and report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think upon these things. He's telling us what we should be thinking upon. Our mind sometimes in left field, where it should be in center field, upon Christ. This is what we should think upon. I love that. Remember, it keeps, it keeps the heart from strife. There can be no connection where there is no peace, where there is peace. I mean, I'm sorry, there can be no contention where there is peace. Remember that. Where there is peace, there is no fighting. Where there is fighting, there is no peace. So we need that peace of God. Amen? I love that. It's beautiful. I'm going to go back up. The mighty effects. In 2 Thessalonians 3.16, it says, Now the Lord of peace himself, now the Lord of peace himself, gives you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. He gives you peace always. Not sometimes, not a little times, but always it says in 2 Thessalonians 3.16. If we read John 14.27, it says, Peace I leave with you. These are Jesus' words. 
He's telling the disciples because he's going to leave them real soon. He says, listen, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Because I give you my peace, he says. My peace. Peace shall guard, shall be a guard. Peace I leave with you. My peace I shall give unto you. This peace is the peace of God and that it passes all understanding. This is what he's saying, Jesus. I give you this peace that surpasses all understanding. I don't see a lot of peace as much as we should have in the church of God today. In his body, there's not as much peace. When you're talking to people that are Christians and you see the concerns, my concern should be, am I in the right standing with Christ? Is my walk what he's called me to do? Am I pleasing to him? Something to think about. Amen? That's, That's what we should be thinking. The world gives conventionally. Listen to this. This is the peace. The world gives it conventionally, but Christ gives it sincerely. The world gives it superficially, but Christ gives it substantially. The world gives it partially, but Christ gives it perfectly. The world gives it temporarily, Christ gives it for eternal. That's, That's the, the peace, peace I, I want, want. Not, not what, what the, the world, world gives, but what Christ gives. gives. Ephesians 2.14, for he is our peace. He is our peace. He is our peace. Who he has, has made, made both one and has broken, broken down, down the middle wall of partition between us. us. He, he is, is our peace. peace. Isaiah 6.26 verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Perfect peace. Not some off the wall peace, but perfect peace. Perfect, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. So now you see the condition. It's whose mind is on him. He keeps in perfect peace. I love that part. Perfect peace. The scriptures are full of priceless secrets. And here is one of them. There is no peace, says God, to the wicked. Did you know that said that? There is no peace. So all these wicked things we see going on, there's no peace there. And if you want to know that verse, it's Isaiah 48, verse 22. There is no peace, says the Lord, unto the wicked. There is, I know, a false peace as well as a true peace. True faith in God brings assurance and peace to the soul in all circumstances of prosperity and adversity. When we have that perfect peace of God within our heart, our walk within peace. I want that kind of peace. From this moment on, I want that where everything surpasses all my understanding, where God has given me his peace. In all the situations, what we're seeing today, a lot of talk out there today, I want the peace of God in my heart. I want to be still within God. Who else will agree with me on that? Uh, Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We even have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that I have peace with God because I don't want to make God angry where I see any of his wrath because I'd be a pile of carbon within seconds. Yeah, I'm glad his ways are higher than my ways, amen? I don't understand his complete peace that he says he on us, but I'm going to believe that he gives it to us. That's what I'm going to believe. The power of God that you read earlier in verse 7, it says the power of God, or I mean, I'm sorry, it was in uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, 4 says this, To the inheritance, the incorruptible, to the undefiled, and to that fadeth not away, reserved in heavens for you, verse 5, where we are kept by the power of God. That's 1 Peter 1, chapter 1, and verse 4, and verse 5. We are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready by, to be revealed in the last times. We will not stumble is what that tells me. We will not stumble. By the power of God, through faith. Have we ever heard through faith? Isn't grace, we're saved by grace, what? Through faith. Now we have peace, and we have the power of God through faith. We need to have that faith in our life. 
2 Peter 1.10 says this, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be all more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you have patience, these things, you will never stumble. <laughs> you will never stumble. Do we believe the word of God is true? I want to take that verse and claim it as a promise. It says you will never stumble. These things we need to read more and underline them more and say, Lord, you said I will never stumble. Thank you for that, that power of God. In Psalm 66, verse 9, who keeps us in life and does not allow our feet to slip. Listen to these promises. Psalms 121, verse 3. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. He will not allow your feet to slip. He will not allow you to trip, it says. I think we've been thinking about ourselves too much and not realizing God says, I made a promise. You will not slip. You will not stumble. I have brought in your path. I think that's pretty interesting here. Proverbs 4.12 says this, when you walk, your steps will not be impeded. And if you run, you will not stumble. What promises we have from the Lord through his word? The meaning is you will not stumble because you will be walking in the way of wisdom, which is free from stumbling blocks. Have a little wisdom and you'll be amazed how far you can go. Let's turn to Romans Chapter 8. When you get there, say amen. You're not turning, that's okay too. Romans chapter 8. Amen. And we're going to start in verse 31. Verse 31. Okay, you ready? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Remember, that's word all. Verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who? Shall so charge us. The word saying who? Look at it. Who? It is God that justifies. Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that he is risen. Again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Hallelujah. Look at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Hmm. Or dis distress? Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Look at verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than what? Conquerors. Through him that loves us. And look at what he finishes 38 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things in present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. What a promise. There is nothing Paul saying. There is nothing you can think about can separate you from the love of God. He has called you his sons and daughters, which you are his sons and daughters. Yeah, I know sometimes there's prodigal ones, but you always come back. Sometimes people backslide, but backsliding means there's always a place to go. It's forward, and that's back in Christ. So I think it's beautiful, these scriptures that we're given here today. Amen? Amen? Man, Man look, look at the, the promises, promises of uplifting, uplifting, uplifting. Learn the security of life, which is built on the eternal principle of this book. 
It has no fear. Its response is unbroken by alarm. It has the peace within itself with no man but with God and God alone. Because the God of patience, hope, and peace is with us, is with us. The God of patience, the God of hope, and the God of peace is with us. Since you're in Romans right there, go to chapter 15. So he's giving you some verses today, amen? Verse 15, look at what it says there in verse 5. Verse 15, 5. Now the God of what? How many of us need more patience? Everybody's hands go up. What about long-suffering, which means the same thing? We all need it, right? But what do we, who do we serve? The God of patience. And consolation grants unto you like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 13. Now the God of what? Hope. Now the God of hope fills you with all joy and peace, peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now look at the last one, verse 33. You're there? Look at it. Now the God of what? Peace be with you all. Amen. We have God of peace. I want us to keep understanding we have this. He is a God of hope. He's a God of patience. He's a God of peace. He is light. He is holy. He's all in all. We need to put our mindset back upon God and less upon things around us. We shouldn't have faith in this world. We should have faith only through Jesus Christ. And that's a hard thing when you're seeing tribulations and when you're seeing pains and we're seeing things happening within your families. We get all worried and we get all upset and we get all things, but where is our faith in God? Boy, do I need to learn that. I think we all need to learn that to help us. Peace with all. Whence does it flow? From the God of peace. How is it secured? By his patience. What is the result? Peace. Within, without, and with all. That's as simple as putting all those together. Proverbs 3.26. Proverbs 3.26. For the Lord shall be thy confidence. We go back to that. He shall be our confidence. He shall keep thy foot from being taken. And shall keep thy foot from being taken. Think about that. From the snares of sin. From temptation. From mischief. And those which Satan and the world lay for God's people. From these the Lord preserves them. Wherefore happy are those that have interest in Christ. Who finds and enjoy in him. That's where he keeps our foot from. Temptation. He keeps our foot from sin, from all that stuff that the enemy tries to lay in from us. God already has a plan for it. The problem is we don't follow the plan sometimes. I have to say that because we've all been there. He keepeth. He keepeth. Yeah, Proverbs 2.8 says, He keepeth the path of judgment and he preserves the ways of his saints. Well, back it up with scripture. He preserves the way of saints. He keeps the path of judgment. That is, the Lord keeps them. He does that which is just and right of himself. By what? By his preventing grace. As in Psalm 66, verse 9. He suffers not our feet to slip. That's the God that I serve. I want to give you guys hope. I want you guys to be built up today when you walk out here. Wait a minute. I have a God of peace. I have a God of patience. I have a God of hope. He protects me. He is my rock. He's my defense. He's my fortress. I shall not be greatly moved. Let's have more confidence in God. Whew. Which, which holdeth our soul in life and suffers not our feet to be moved. This is... From the firm position of safety, safety, I'm sorry. The idea is taken from one who is walking and who is kept from slipping or falling. When we're walking in Christ, God already has that path lined out for us. And he keeps us from falling and slipping off of it. Wow. In verse, I mean, in Proverbs 4.12, 
It says, when thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. I mean, shall not be straightened. But when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. I said that. We shall not stumble. 36, Psalms 18, 36. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet slip not. And they, listen, and here have they that feet established upon the rock of ages. All of us, our feet are established upon the rock of ages. That sure and large foundation. Jesus is our rock. He's our foundation. It's not a pebble we're standing up. We're not standing on a pebble. We're not balancing up on a round rock. We're on a foundation. When they build any place, they put that cornerstone, which is the massive stone. It's the sure stone that keeps everything else afloat. Just as us, we're up on that rock. In Proverbs 10, 19, he that walketh uprightly walks surely, but he that perverted in his well, ways shall be known. I think that is beautiful there. In Proverbs 37, verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. By the Lord. And he is, listen, he is delighted in his ways. The next verse says, even though he falls, he won't be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. It's, it's always, always the Lord that's upholding us. It's, it's always the Lord that's guiding us. In Jeremiah 10, 23, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. It only comes from the Lord that directs our steps. It's not in man. It's not in who's around you. It's in God and God alone that directs your steps. We need to focus more upon God today. Jesus is our all in all. Even in Jeremiah, I mean in Job, Job 23, verse 11, my foot has he has held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Verse 12, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips, but I have esteemed his words more than my necessary food. Job at this time had boils all over him, sitting in ashes, and had four guys chewing on his ear constantly. Lost his children, lost everything he has. His wife is not loving him like she should, you know, condemning him, telling him, why don't you just curse God and die? Because she sees him in the misery that he's in. And he just says, no, no. I'm not going to go against the commandments of his lips, and I'm going to esteem his words more than my necessary food. My eyes are still upon God. You're looking at the flesh. You're looking at this world. I still have my eyes upon him. I think that's beautiful. Beautiful. Psalms 20, 37, verse 24. Though he fall, that's what I read, he won't be utterly cast down. Micah 7, verse 7. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the Lord of my salvation. My God will hear me, verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light unto me. No matter where I am at, I have the light of God. In Luke 22, verse 33, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Verse 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brothers. He prophesied to him, gave him a word of prophecy right there. When thy is converted, which happened on Pentecost, when thy is converted, look at this, look at that, strengthen thy brothers. We're to strengthen one another. When we come in here, we're to strengthen, to lift up each other. We can do it. That's what I'm doing today. We can make it. You will not stumble if your eyes are up on Christ. And then verse 33 of that same chapter 22, and he said unto the Lord, I am ready to go thee both into prison and to death. Watch your words. Watch your words, because we know what happened to Peter after that, right? Verse 34, here it goes. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the, the cock shall not crow this day, before thou hast three times denied, thou knowest me. Watch what we speak in boldness. Just remember to say, my faith is in God. 
you know, know I, can't I can't say, say I'm, I'm never going to go against God or deny God or say something bad. bad. God, God is my peace. God, God is my hope. I pray that he just keeps that step of mine broad like he promised that I won't stumble. I was reading this morning where we always say that the apostles follow him afar off and how Peter followed him afar off. But if you read in Matthew, it said Mary Magdalene and the mom Mary and the rest of the ladies were following him afar off. So, so when, when something, something bad, bad happens, happens to our, our Savior, Savior, we follow afar off. Usually, Usually when, when something, something bad, ha bad, bad happens in our life, we start following Jesus afar off. That's, that's when we should get closer to Christ. Christ. Oh, oh, you didn't answer my prayer. prayer. Oh, yeah, he has. We just we haven't seen it. it. Amen? We, we prayed, prayed for, for so many things, things but sometimes, sometimes it takes a long time. time. I mean, I, I, I picture Moses being in a desert for 40 years before he was allowed to go preach. 40 years. <laughs> 40 years he was there. When he was 80 years old, 80, 20 some, or maybe 16 years older than me. Then God said, now go. I had to cleanse you and wash you and get the filth out of you. It took 40 years. That's the way I see that. God always has a plan. We think it should happen tomorrow, but God knows when it's going to happen. And he's, it will happen. I love, I love the, the Proverbs, Proverbs 26, 26, verse 16. And you know, it's amazing. This, this verse, I thought about this last week. And, and, and when I do my memorization, I have a program. I just like to flash cards at me and I try to memorize. You know, it's, it's just me. It's not me trying to be holier than anybody. In this right here, every day, Proverbs 24, verse 16 comes up. And it says, the just man falls seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. He tells me over and over about every day, this verse keeps coming up, even though I haven't memorized, he keeps warning me and telling me, listen, the just man will fall seven times, but he will rise again, because I am the God of patience. I am the God of hope. I am the God of peace. I am your God. I'm your Father. What a blessing that is. Amen? I just, I just love it. it. I want to finish, finish up with a couple of last verses, verses here. I'm going to give you about five more verses. verses. In Proverbs, I mean, in Psalms 37, verse 31, it says, The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. When God is in full in your heart and his law is controlling you through your walk in life, and that law, Jesus says, fulfilled, so it's Jesus Christ is your law. It's, it's our, our schoolmaster. School it, it teaches, teaches us. us. Amen? Amen? It teaches it us. us. Psalms 91, verse 11, For he shall give the angels charge over thee to keep thy way in all thy ways. He even gives his angels in charge about us to keep us in our ways. Psalms 121, verse 3, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Psalm in verse 8, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth forever and forevermore. Hallelujah. We'll finish with this verse, Psalms 112, verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed and trusting in the Lord. Father, I thank you that your word has gone forth. But I pray that the word lands upon the good hearts. That everybody in here, Father, will just take this word and plant it that so it germinates into a great and mighty, mighty vine which we're to abide in, which is Jesus Christ. You said, thy word have been hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I pray that word comes more out of all of us and that we will meditate upon your word more and more during these last days. Bless the hearers, Father. Bless the people that came today and the people that couldn't make it today, Father. I pray that you bless them too. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the people. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we all say, Can we go longer?